Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is called the distributive property part one. You might also see it called the distributive property of equality. Either way, it's the same exact thing. I cannot tell you how important this is to all of your future studies. Some of the other properties we learned before, like the associative, the commutative properties, those are important. But the distributive property is used constantly when you get into pre-algebra and algebra and beyond. So here we're going to introduce it in a very simple way. And I really want to work a ton of problems because I really want you to understand in your bones exactly what the distributive property is. So here it is. I want you to ignore, first of all, ignore all the letters down below. Just don't even look at this stuff. What we have above here is a four times in parentheses one plus two. So the distributive property applies when you have a something multiplied times a parentheses. And on the inside of the parentheses, you can have either a plus or a minus, but here we have a plus. And what we're doing here at the distributive properties, I'm telling you that this is equal to taking the four and multiplying by the one, and then taking the four and then multiplying by the two. So basically you can think of this four as kind of like going in and like bombing these guys on the inside and multiplying there. You can almost say that the four is being distributed inside the parentheses. That's why it's called the distributive property. Now in terms of letters, you need to get used to looking at letters, so don't let it scare you. All it's telling you is that if you have some number, we're gonna call it A, times some parentheses with two other numbers added on the inside, then it's the same thing as just taking A times the B which is this one, and then the plus sign is from here, and then A times the C here. So this A here on the outside uh, here is being distributed in times the B, and then it's also being distributed in times the C. All right, now I wanna talk a whole lot more about this, but before we go too much farther, let me just rewrite this guy, because I really want to drive it home what we're doing here. Let's say that you have four times one plus two. This is exactly what I have written on the board. There's no difference. I use a dot to multiply instead of the X's because we're going to be very soon using X's for variables. Like we have these letters here. So X's, we don't want to use multiplication, uh, use an X for multiplication. So we use a dot. This means four times this thing. All right. Now what we're doing with the distributive property is we're basically saying that when you have a number or something times a parentheses with things added or subtracted on the inside, then the four can be distributed in and multiplied times the one, and then also distributed in and multiplied times the two. Whatever is on the inside gets multiplied by whatever is on the outside. So you would then say that this is equal to, on the right-hand side, the four times the one, right? And then plus, because we have a plus sign here, if it were a minus, then we would have a minus here, but it's a plus, then four gets distributed in and multiplied times the two. This is the essence of the distributive property. It's taking what's on the outside, multiplied by the parentheses, and multiplying times every single thing, every term that is on the inside of those parentheses. All right, now let's take this a little farther down and let's just convince ourselves this is true. Well, what would we get if we did the four times one? We would have a four. What would we get if we did the four times two? We would have an eight. And of course they're added together. So what would we have? Eight plus four, right? That's 12, okay? Now what would happen if we did order of operations on the left? We have uh, parentheses here. We have to do that first, right? So in the parentheses, one plus two is three. And the parentheses we can now drop and then we have to rewrite the problem. Remember, for order of operations, we always do the parentheses first. Four times three is, of course, 12. And so you can see that when you follow the order of operations on the left-hand side, doing what's inside the parentheses first to get a three, and then the three times the four, you get 12. If you distribute the four and multiply times all of the inner terms, what you get is the exact same thing. What this is telling you is that this way of writing it is exactly the same thing as blowing it out and distributing that four in. So now we can go back to our picture and understand. All it's doing is saying multiply times this, multiply times this, and we're adding them because there's a plus sign on the middle. Now in terms of letters, all it's saying is multiply times this, and then multiply times this. And we're adding them because there's a plus sign uh, there as well. As we go down into the future, sometimes we'll have a minus sign in there. And in that case, then we'll just have a minus sign over here. So this is the essence of the distributive property. And we're going to do it over and over and over and over again, because it really is incredibly important. What if instead of this, I have two times uh, five plus three. What I want to do I can calculate this, of course I know how, but I want to rewrite it using the distributive property. 
and then I want to calculate the, I want to make sure that they're the same. So I want to rewrite this using the distributive property and then we're gonna verify that it's correct by calculating each side. So what would I have on the right hand side? Using the distributive property, this two gets distributed in times the five and then also distributed in times the three. So it'd be two times the five here, and then the plus sign comes from what's on the inside there, and then two times the three. All right, so this is the answer, right? Now, what would happen if we multiply two times five, we get 10, what would happen if we did this? Two times three is six, so what do we get here on the right-hand side, 16, right? Now, what would happen if we solve the left-hand side? We do the parentheses first, five plus three is eight, and then we still have to multiply by two, and then the two times eight is 16, and we've verified that it's correct. So these problems are all gonna be done the same way. We're gonna distribute, we're gonna calculate both sides, and we're gonna verify everything is correct. This is true of any terms inside of a parentheses. Actually, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a preview. It's also true even if you have more than two things on the inside. What if you had three things on the inside, or four things on the inside, or five things on the inside? What do you think would happen? Well, on the outside, all that would happen is I would keep multiplying by everything that's on the inside here and I would have more multiplications out here, uh, but that's what would happen. All right, let's move along. We're gonna crank through these pretty fast. Let's say we have four times three plus two. Using the distributive property, what would I get? Well, I would distribute times the three and distribute times the two. I would get four times three and then four times two. Like this. And then what would I get on the right hand side? Four times three would be 12. And then four times two would be eight. And what would I get? I would get 20. Now what would I get if I did it on the left hand side? First I would do the parentheses. Three plus two is five. And then I would have times four and four times five is 20. So this is correct. Multiplying it out like this gives me exactly the same answer as if I do it the other way using order of operations. All right, next. Five times one plus six. What do I do? I distribute this into the parentheses times the one times the six, five times one. I write as five times one, and then five times six. Five times one would be five. Five times six would be 30. So what would I get? 35. On the left-hand side, what if I did this? One plus six would be seven, and then times the five. Seven times five would give me 35 here, so I know I've done everything correct because they check out. All right, so we can go a little faster here because we're, we're cranking through things. Let's, let's move over to this board over here. And let's take a look at eight times seven plus three. What would I do? Well, the eight on the outside would be distributed in times each of the inside terms. So it would be eight times seven plus, because of the plus sign here, and then eight times three, like this. Now, what is eight times seven? It'd be 56, and what is eight times three? 24, right? Now, I know you know how to add things. You can line these up and add them. What would happen if you add them? You're gonna get 80. You can kind of think about it because the six and the four would be 10, and then the, the, seven and the, uh, the, the five and the two would be seven, but since you had a 10, you carried the one, so it would be an eight, and so that, that would give you 80. Now, let's check it over here. Over here, you would have seven plus three, which would be 10, and then you would still have to multiply by the eight and you would get 80, all right? So that's correct. All right, next problem. Let's take a look at six times five uh, plus two, in parentheses, of course. What would happen? We just multiply in and distribute in like this. So we would have uh, six times five plus six times two. And if we multiply this out, the six times five would be 30, and the six times two would be 12. And what would I get? 30 plus 12 would be 42, all right, 42. And then I would check that against the left. Five plus two on the inside would be 10. I'm sorry, not 10, five plus two is not 10. Five plus two is seven. I had a, a brain aneurysm right there, sorry about that. Seven times six, seven times six would be 42, which would be exactly the correct answer. All right, we're at halfway done. Now I think I've shown you that on the left-hand side, 
when we check it, it's always equal to what's on the right hand side. So now we're going to stop checking it all the time. We're just going to use the distributive property and calculate the answer using the distributive property. So let's continue. Let's say we have 11 times 4 plus 1. What would I do? Well, I would go and say 11 times the 4 would be 11 times 4. And then I have a plus sign from here, and then it would be 11 times the 1. All right, so what would we get on the right? 11 times 4 would be 44. And then 11 times 1 would be 11. And I can add these. I can line them up, but I can also just think if I stack it here, it'd be 5. It'd be plus 1 and plus 1, so it would be 55. So 55 would be the right answer. And if you want to check it, just in your mind, 4 plus 1 is 5, so the 5 times 11 would be the 55. So we know that it's correct. All right. Just a few more. Let's take a look at 8 times 4 plus 3. What do we do? Well, the 8 gets distributed in times the 4 and then times the 3. So the 8 times the 4 would be written right here. The plus sign comes because this is a plus sign, and then 8 times 3. Like this. So what do we have on the right-hand side? 8 times 4 is 32, and then 8 times 3 is 24. Right? Now you can go off to the side, 32 and 24, and you can add these. You get a 6 right here and a 5 right here. So we get an answer of 56, and this is the final answer. And if you wanted to check it, you would do this first. That would give you 7, and 7 times 8 is 56, so you know it's correct. All right, I think we only have two more, and we're moving through these pretty fast once we know what we're doing. Let's say we have 4 times uh, 6 plus 5. What do we do? We multiply times the 6, then we multiply times the 5. The 4 times the 6 would be here, and then the plus sign comes from here, and then the 4 times the 5. All right, what do we get? 4 times 6 is 24, and then 4 times 5 is what? 20. And then the 20 plus the 24 would give me 44, so it's just going to be 44 right here. This is the final answer. You can check it. 6 plus 5 is 11. This 11 times 4 would be 44, so you know it's the correct answer. What about 3 times 8 plus 4? What would I get? I distribute in 3 times the 8, and then I have a plus sign from here, and then 3 times the 4. Notice, again, I haven't mentioned it, but we are calculating, we're doing the multiplications first because order of operations tells us we have to do multiplication before we ever do this addition. So 8 times 3, 24. And then 3 times 4 is 12. And uh, if you can visualize this underneath and add it, you're going to get 36. Of course, you can stack them up and add it as well and get 36. So that's the final answer. If you want to check it, 8 plus 4 is 12. And then the 12 times 3 is 36. So you know you got the right answer. All right, I think we have one more problem, and here it is. It is 7 times 7 plus 2. Same story. The 7 gets distributed in times the 7, and then the plus sign comes from here, and then the 7 times the 2. All right, 7 times the 2. Again, so on the right-hand side, do the multiplications first. 7 times 7, 49, and then 7 times 2 is 14. Well, maybe you're not totally sure what this is going to equal, so to just go over here and say 49, 14, and add. This will give you 13, and then that's 5, and that's 6, so you get an answer of 63, and that's the final answer. Always check yourself. This gives you 9, and then 9 times 7 is 63, so you know it's correct. So here, we have conquered one of the most important properties in math. You might look at these numbers and say, well, okay, I could do it either way, fine, I really don't need it. But the reality of it is, is that when you get a little farther in math um, to when we have to do other things, I don't want to get into the details, but we're going to be using the distributive property so much coming down the road. It's going to be kind of like not optional. Here I'm showing you two different ways of calculating and you think, oh, I'll just do what I want. But you have to know the distributive property because we will use it constantly coming very soon. So practice all of these and then follow me on to part two. We'll get a little more practice.